get fools out of kid don't play if there was a problem yo i'll solve it check out the hook while my dj revolves it hi everybody welcome back to my youtube channel pass math with miss passarella i'm your favorite math teacher miss passarella um, don't forget, before I get started, to like, share, and subscribe. And when you're done, always make a comment. If you have a question, you can always make a comment. And just so you know, there is a homework video associated with this topic, since this one is a how-to video. Second video with me in it. So I hope to improve over time, and I would obviously like your feedback on that in the comment section. All right, so let's get started. Today we are going to solve multi-step equations with proportions. They're also called rational equations, um, except for sometimes if you Google rational equations, they're a lot more sophisticated than these ones. These ones are just proportions. Um, so I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna do two different equations two different ways, just so you guys have some options. There's more options out there. I just decided to focus on these two today. So let's get started. And the first equation we have, I'm going to solve by cross multiplying. This is my favorite method. I think it sometimes it's more work. However, it's more consistent and it always gives you a nice starting point if you're struggling. So the first thing I like to do is make my ladder. And my students got upset with me that I didn't draw Bob. Bob is at the top of my ladder and he is really scared. If you don't balance out this ladder, he's gonna fall off of it. So we have to make sure we do the same thing to both sides. Um, all right, I'm gonna first cross multiply. So this is called means and extremes. Nobody cares about that. Seriously, just cross multiply. There's so much vocab I could go over, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna do negative six X times two, and I'm gonna get negative six X times two on this side. Then I'm gonna do x plus 8 times 4 and I'm gonna put it on the left hand side since I started on the left hand side we went over that last video so 4 x plus 8 and now I'm just gonna go ahead and distribute on both sides so I've got 4 x plus 32 equals negative 12 x this is still technically the distributive property even though there's not a second term there all right, now I like to rearrange. You could show your additive inverse properties, but it's not that serious. It takes too long, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and keep the 4x here because it's positive, and then I'm gonna move the negative 12x from the right-hand side, it's negative, so that means on the left-hand side, it's positive. And now the 32 on the left-hand side, it's positive, so on the right-hand side, it's negative. Combine like terms, so 12x and 4x is 16x equals negative 32 and then just divide both sides and we get negative 2 and that's it for this side so again I just cross multiplied distributed and then it was simple equation with variables on both sides and now I'm going to do the same exact problem, except for I'm going to get a common denominator. All right, so for this equation, which is the same exact equation, different approach, I can see that the denominators are 2 and 4. So I need to get the least common denominator or least common multiple, which is 4. So that means I don't have to touch the right-hand side, just the left. So the least common denominator is going to be 4. So I need the left-hand side to now have that same denominator. I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2. Now be careful, because a lot of you might think that I would multiply by 2. You'd say, oh, I'd multiply by 2, which is technically 2 over 1, which is not equivalent. That is not equivalent. So you have to be careful. It's 2 over 2. So now I'm going to go ahead and multiply 2 times my numerator. And then 2 times 2, which is the denominator, is 4. And now I have negative 6x over 4. And now that I can see that my denominators are the same, I can literally just get rid of them. And now I can use the numerator. So 2x plus 16 equals negative 6x. If I take a look now at the equation I did before, 
They might look a little different right now, here and here, but they are equivalent technically. So you're gonna see that we do get the same answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and rearrange because that's my method of choice. I've got 2x, which stays. The negative six is positive on the right, so it's, or I'm sorry, it's negative on the right, so it's positive on the left. And then the 16 is positive on the left, so it's negative on the right. Combine like terms, I get 8x equals negative 16. And you can see that my answer is still negative two. So that one is all set. All right, so for the second equation, example three, um, I think it looks a little bit more sophisticated because it's got variables on the bottom and that looks kind of tricky to me. So to get rid of all the fractions, I just cross multiply. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my ladder. And then I'm going to do the means and extremes. I don't even know which one is which because that doesn't matter. You don't need that information in real life. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply the three times x plus two and then I'm gonna multiply one minus two x times negative two and I'm gonna do the same thing I've been doing and it gets easier and easier as time goes on except for this is the number one place where I think someone would make a mistake number one place you gotta watch your integers I'm gonna do negative two times one which is negative two and then negative two times two x is, let's say this is four x right now, but you gotta change the sign from minus to plus because of the negative. So please be careful here. Don't just bring down the minus sign. This changes all of your signs. Now I'm gonna do three times two x, three times x, which is three x, and then three times two, which is six. And now for this one to rearrange, I'm gonna again keep my variables on the left hand side because four X is bigger. And then three X is positive on the right so it's negative on the left. I'm gonna keep my six here. And then the two is negative on the left so it's positive on the right. Combine like terms here. So four X and three X is X and six plus two, it's eight. And that one wasn't so bad. Um, it looked a little bit more difficult, but it ended up being almost the same. I would say the most difficult part here was this part, getting that um, to say plus instead of minus by bringing it down. Um, let's do this same one again, except for I'm gonna get a common denominator. This is where people might get mixed up. Um, it looks kind of intimidating. It's actually not that bad. So I can see that the left hand side, if I were gonna look at the denominator, it's x plus two and it's missing a negative two if I were gonna get a common denominator. So I would put this in parentheses and put negative two here. And then if I do it to the denominator to keep it equivalent, I also do it to the numerator. So right now my denominator is negative two times x plus two. I'm gonna do the same thing to the right hand side the right hand side is missing an x plus two. So I'm gonna go ahead and put x plus two. If I did it to the denominator, I have to do it to the numerator or the top. So now you can see that the denominators are the same. So I can just literally cross them out and I, I can eliminate the denominator since they're in common. And now I'm gonna bring down what I've multiplied. So negative two times one is negative two and negative two times negative two x. Be careful here, it's plus four x equals, and now three times x, is we have three x, and three times two, we have six. Um, now you can see that this line here is the same thing as this line here. So just to keep it exciting, I'm gonna actually show the inverse properties here since some of you do prefer that. So I'm gonna combine like terms, but on the left-hand side, I want the x's, and on the right-hand side, I want the numbers. So I'm gonna do minus three x, do it to one side, do it to the other. This is what I mean by balance the ladder. If you do it to one side, you have to do it to the other. And look, Bob is really scared, and if you don't do it to both sides, Bob's gonna tip over. So this cancels, and now I'm left with x. I bring down the plus, 
I've got six and now I'm going to get rid of that two. So to get rid of it, I'm going to add it, do it to one side, do it to the other. That's called a property of equality. In this case, that would be the addition property of equality. Cancel X is equal to eight. Wow. I got the same exact answer as I did over here. So that was two different approaches. Again, there's other approaches, but these two are my favorite. But my all-time favorite is to cross, cross multiply. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Um, and I will see you again real soon. Bye, guys. If there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook while my DJ revolves it. Ice, ice, ice.